one new fashion in football for this season, demonstrated by these Indian visitors to Wellington out for a picnic at Maidstone Park, organized by the mission to British seamen. No togs needed, it's all in football. Boots on, boots off, no holds barred, and shirt tails down. It's all India versus the rest of India. At the moment, all India's all over the rest of India, and they're all over Maidstone Park. Ranji Sanji Tanji and Hultins who come through with the ball at their toes. This fellow looks to be offside, but he gets away with it, just like a lot of other fellows we used to know. a try, a goal, uh, or something. Anyway, somebody's won, somebody's lost, and somebody's sore. In shitting for the traditional army mule, a donkey introduces football American fashion to Auckland. The kickoff. This is about the only time you ever see the ball in this game. The big crowd tries hard to follow the play, but only millions of Americans can understand it. This is what they call a huddle, taking time out to decide who to pick on next. New Zealand provided the donkey, and New Zealand tank crews provided the steel helmets worn by the players. But let's get back quick, we're getting all behind with the game. Well, fashions come and fashions go, but we still like the game they play on Eden Park or Cattersbrook every Saturday afternoon. A southerly squall seems to accompany everyone we greet on Wellington Wharf. This time, the new arrivals are the English wives and the children of New Zealanders who married while on service in Britain. Most of the families are those of forestry unit men who returned some time ago. And here they are, out of uniform now, but as glamorous as ever. It's not often we see civilians disembarking from anything but a ferry steamer. Newcomers to New Zealand have been few in wartime, and it was shipping problems that forced the separation of these families. But now they're together again, the husbands in their own country, the wives and children in a strange land. The pram was worth bringing, though they're not quite as scarce here as they are in Britain. For about a year, everything will seem a bit strange, but after that, they'll all feel quite at home. If some of the children look older than you'd expect, the explanation is quite simple. Some of the boys married the widows of British servicemen and brought their children out to a new country. So it's goodbye to the ship and on towards the new homes and relatives. At the reception depot, New Zealand milk is sampled for the first time by the young immigrants. While some sleep, others are being welcomed to their new homeland by the Deputy Prime Minister, the Honourable D.G. Sullivan. Uh, one of the uh, interesting things is the fact that there are such a large number of beautiful little curly-headed babies. But I'm sure that no final lot of babies has ever come to our country, and every one of them is going to make a real good New Zealander and is going to be happy and prosperous in our land. Actually, everyone in England is in some form of service. We're all trying very hard to do our bit. Uh, I was a trained nurse. I was in the Women's Temple Corps. They all seem a bit more cheerful now that uh, things seem to be coming to an end. And uh, looking forward to the second front to finish everything off. Get rid of old Hitler for good and all. I come from London. And uh, people are all doing very well there. We have plenty to eat. Haven't all the things that we had before the war, of course, but there's plenty for everybody. I was in London all through the air raids, but uh, everybody's put up to it marvellously. Everybody thinks the, the babies over here are lovely, but we think it's probably the New Zealand fathers that are cause of it. <laughs> On Nissan Island, the New Zealand bakers are on the job. They see to it that the men of the Kiwi Division in the Pacific get their daily bread. They got it even during the invasion of the island, for the men of this field bakery pride themselves on being able to keep up with the frontline troops. They were among the first ashore, 
And before all the division's equipment was landed, they turned out their first batch of bread. Today's batch is well on the way, and it's nice to know that someone has found a use for the local mud. When the door is opened, out comes crisp new bread. Handling hot bread in a hot climate is no joke, but it's all in the day's work for these frontline bakers. And this is the day's output of 2,000 pounds of bread cooling off. There's certainly been no loafing on this job. Thank you. 